So we've all heard the news. Leroy Sane, one of Manchester City's best players this season, has been left out of the Germany squad earlier this week for the up-and-coming World Cup. As most teams now have finalised their 23-man squads, this inspired me to create a squad on FIFA 18 career mode of players that actually qualified for the World Cup, however, weren't actually selected by their national teams and their national team managers to be on that plane to Russia. And some of you might be surprised about the sheer quality of players and talent that make this team, but we've put this team into Fulham due to their recent promotion to the Premier League. And we're gonna have to look to see if this missing World Cup 11 could win the Champions League and see how they do in the Premier League uh, with all these players. Obviously a five-star team, so it'll be very interesting to see how they go. Hey guys, how's it going? BCHD here. Welcome back to another FIFA 18 career mode video on the channel. If you do go on to enjoy, smack a like button on the video. Subscribe for more FIFA 18 content. Follow me on Twitter. The link's in the description and let's get straight into this missing World Cup squad. As you can see here, this is the starting 11 for the missing World Cup squad. And we have Martial starting out on the left wing here. Not getting much game time for Man United this season, but when he did, he did get a couple goals, a couple assists, but he misses out um, on that France squad. We have Mato Icardi getting 29 goals in the Serie A this season, along with Chiro Immobile. But uh, Argentina's attack is just way too stacked, and Icardi didn't make the cut. We have Leroy Sane, PFA Young Player of the Year in the Premier League, not getting on that Germany squad uh, due to form, some say. But we do have nine Golan, uh, Belgium, not getting him in the squad as Roberto Martinez thinks he's... For tactical reasons, he's not going to be in the squad as we have Fabinho recently uh, getting a big money move to Liverpool um, and he's not in the Brazil squad for some strange reason as well as Jack Wilshere. A lot of England fans not happy that he is not in the squad as well as some Arsenal fans too because he didn't get that much game time this season but when he did, he did play really well especially in the Europa League. Uh, Javi Martinez there for Spain, the Bayern Munich man not getting uh, in that Spain squad even though he's a very, very decent midfielder and center back. We have David Luiz. His last World Cup outing was that 7-1 defeat to Germany. So Brazil not too keen on taking David Luiz into uh, the World Cup squad. Maybe if the World Cup was last year, they would have taken him off the, um, the Premier League win. As we have Hector Bellerin not having that great of a season for Arsenal. And we have Alexandro being left out of Brazil. Not that he had a bad season. It's just that Brazil is stacked with left backs. They've got Marcelo and Felipe Luiz. So no room for Alexandro, even though he can play left wing. Of course, Brazil's uh, attack is just too stacked for Alexandro to come in there, even as a utility player. And we finish off with Bird Leno from Bayer Leverkusen, not making that Germany squad. The three Germany goalkeepers are Trapp, uh, Neuer, and to Stegen and Leno misses out there. I thought he had a quality season in the Bundesliga. Obviously not up to Germany's standards and is not fitting into that squad. We do have Payet here for France. I believe he is injured even though he made it to the uh, Marseille, Marseille made it to the Europa League final. We have uh, Morata here. Not a good debut season for Chelsea. He's not making the Spain squad. Lacazette. Um, France's attack is just too stacked for Lacazette to come in anywhere. So not that he had a bad season at Arsenal but he just couldn't fit in the squad. Fabregas um, didn't really have that much of an outstanding season for Chelsea either. Farman, another German goalkeeper, not making the cut. Germany are just stacked with goalkeepers, uh, but Manuel Neuer there getting uh, the top spot for Germany as Laporte, the injury-prone centre-back, as well as that man, Mario Goetze, scoring the winning goal in 2014 for Germany, not making it on the plane for the squad, didn't really have a great season. Benzema for France, also not making it in. As you can see here, we've got Huvedes for Germany, Semedo, the Portuguese right back, Alonso, the Spaniard for Chelsea, Bartra, the Spaniard for Dortmund, Roberto, um, the right back for Barcelona, Scherler, the man that assisted that World Cup winning goal for Goethe, Rabiot, the French midfielder, and we have Ruben Neves, had an outstanding season in the championship for Wolves, and we have a little wild card in there, Correa from Argentina, but this is going to be our squad going into the Premier League season. Let's see how they do. Can they make top four? We're aiming for top four because we want to get a Champions League place for next season. I'm hoping this team can pull through such quality in that team. I was trying to kind of struggling whether where who I should put where in what formation, but we're simulating to the last day of the season to see how the missing squad 
um, for the World Cup does, and this is the Premier League table. We are second in the Premier League, only to Spurs, uh, who came first. We got 75 points, 22 wins, 9 draws, and 7 losses. Um, so pretty decent debut season for the missing World Cup 11 in the Premier League. As we're going to see the stats for the team, you can quickly um, scroll through the stats. We're going to go through by appearances. And Leo Rosane, the man that didn't get the cup for Germany, getting 43 appearances for the missing World Cup squad. 43 appearances, 25 goals and 2 assists. A very nice season for the 22-year-old in the Premier League with the missing World Cup squad. Probably our star player there, starring the most and getting the most goals. So, I mean, he was by far our best player. Fabinho in here as well with 37 appearances, 4 goals and 2 assists. For the Brazilian, I'm not sure why he didn't make the Brazil squad. Um, their squad is also stacked. And, you know, he had a good season last season, but this season sort of dropped off. Bern Leno there getting 35 appearances. Our main goalkeeper, Javi Martinez, our main centre-back in there as well. Nelson Semedo um, also sneaking into the squad, even though he wasn't in my starting 11. Alexandro um, getting a few goals in there as well from left-back, which is good to see. Nine Golan getting 30 appearances for the 30-year-old. Uh, Alexandro Lacazette, the, our striker, not getting that many. Two goals and five assists. David Luiz also making a little cameo with 26 appearances and two goals. Um, or, uh, also, Cesc Fabregas, another Chelsea man, getting 26 appearances. Schürrle did get an injury, although he did get 25 appearances, eight goals and three assists for the man that assisted that World Cup winning goal. Him and Goetze are not on the plane to Russia. Pretty heartbreaking to see how four years can change so much. And these are the players that, you know, came in a few um, in times in the season. Not much contribution throughout the season, but did get a few uh, appearances, such as Martial getting 10, three goals and one assist in there as well. He might have got injured throughout the season, but Morata, Icardi, Rabio, Goetze, not really getting that many appearances for the squad, as you can see here. We're going all the way down, um, as you can see. That's the squad. That's how they did in the first season. Um, we've qualified for a Champions League spot. So if you want to see how any of your players um, did in the season, go through, pause the video. But those are the main players that did make it. Jack Wilshere only getting four appearances, surprisingly. But Hoover Dez getting five. Pay getting six appearances with one goal and one assist. Um, but yeah, that is the missing World Cup squad 11 for season number one. They've come second in the Premier League only to Tottenham Hotspur. And we've qualified for a European play. So let's see how we do next season in the Champions League. And in the Premier League, Sane gets second top goal scorer in the Premier League only to Willian of Chelsea. Sane hitting double digits there with 20 goals in the Premier League. We can't really see anyone else in that list for us. Top, gore, top goal scorers or top assists. So... It looks like Sane, the man who missed out for Germany, the man that wasn't good enough and didn't play that well for Germany, um, is our best player in this squad. As you can see here, the start of Season 2 for the Missing World Cup 11, we have a community shield to play for against Tottenham Hotspurs, the champions of last season. As we go in, the Missing World Cup 11, putting in Semedo at right back, uh, Laporte coming in at centre back with Martinez and Lacazette starting up top. So we're going to have a look to see how we go in our first pretty much major game for silverware as the first half was pretty boring. Alexandro getting a yellow card there, but we progress through. Wilshere gets a goal from a penalty. Uh, 72nd minute. Can we hold on? But Ali forces it into extra time and the boys missing the World Cup win it on penalties. They would have been useful if their country were went to extra time and penalties, but it wasn't to be as we do win 5-4 on penalties to win the Community Shield. Wasn't the main objective of this video. However, we do get that first piece of silverware with this team as the World Cup boys that aren't going to Russia uh, look to get the Community Shield in our first pretty much big game for silverware. As you can see there, our Champions League group for the second season we do end up topping the group on goal difference. However, Sporting Lisbon did come with exactly 10 points. But Shitkas with 9 narrowly missing out on second spot as they go to the Europa League. And Olympiacos finishing bottom with 3 draws. And we do progress with ease. 3 wins, 1 draw and 2 losses in the, our debut Champions League season. Uh, what you expect from the boys. But it doesn't get any easier as we are versing Inter Milan at um, in the round of 16. As you can see there, Bayern versus Roma. 
Uh, Monaco taking on Dortmund. Sevilla taking on Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, Juve taking on Liverpool. Real Madrid taking on Borussia Mönchengladbach. So the round of 16 is looking pretty saucy at the moment. But we're going into the round of 16 against Inter at the San Siro. Martial gets us off to the perfect start in the sixth minute as Miranda gets a yellow card and Piszczek comes off injured. We get a crucial away goal in this one. I sort of had to re-learn um, the aggregate goal rule in the Champions League. I've been watching too many Serie B playoff games and aggregate isn't a thing in them. I know Italians are pretty weird, but Bellarabi gets an equalizer in the 72nd minute as Lacazette is our main striker this season. Gets a goal in the 81st minute. Gets our second away goal at the San Siro. And we do end up winning that one. 2-1 away from home as we take that lead back to Craven Cottage. And all we need is a draw um, pretty much to go through to the quarterfinals. But it's not over yet as we have our second leg against Inter Milan at the Craven Cottage. Which should be in FIFA 19 now that Fulham is promoted. But... The missing World Cup score going into this one. Bellerin getting a yellow card, but Lacazette following that game at the Sun Seedle gets a goal at home in the ninth minute. We're 3-1 up on aggregate. Let's see if we can hold this one out and progress through the quarterfinals or can Inter get a late fight back here as they bring on Brozovic um, and they do a few substitutions there. Schurler comes on for us as can we hold this one. Alexandro doubles our lead. 4-1 on aggregate to the boys missing out on the World Cup. Getting a goal there, and it finishes 2-0 two two nil to uh, the Missing World Cup squad. And we go into the quarterfinals. Let it, let's see who we verse as we pass into with ease. We are taking on Real Madrid. Not getting easy as they beat Borussia Mönchengladbach 3 2 on aggregate. We beat uh, Inter Milan 4 1. So it's going to be an interesting matchup. It's uh, Barcelona taking on Sevilla there as well. So big, big game as we go into the quarterfinals of the Champions League against uh, recent three time winners in a row, Real Madrid. They just recently won against Liverpool a few weeks ago. We're taking him on here at Craven Cottage. We do have Sane, Lacazette, and Martial up top. Bartra and Laporte in defense. Bellerin makes his return. And Rabio makes his debut. But nine goal in uh, in that one. 30th minute getting us 1-0 up at Craven Cottage. Schurler comes on for Martial. What can we do in this second half? Um, as we get a home goal there to put us 1-0 up. Ronaldo gets an equalizer in the 73rd minute. That's an away goal for Real Madrid to take it back to the Bernabeu as we go to uh, Madrid next week in the away fixture. The second leg. Oh, this is going to be a big one. If we, we have to win this one. If we draw this, we are out as Real Madrid have that away goal advantage. But Lorente gets a yellow card in the first few minutes there. Pretty much the same side besides Howard is coming in there at center back. Um, Ravio also making a bit of a cameo this season as we go into the second half of the second leg in Madrid. Can the boys pull it off as um, Salah comes on for them? But Bellerin, the man at right back, getting a goal in the 64th minute. I was too confused over Salah, not Mohamed Salah, but we hold on in the 64th minute, getting that goal. We defeat Real Madrid 2-1 on aggregate there. And we go through to the Champions League semi-final. What a performance there from the boys in Madrid. As we go on to face Bayern Munich, they win on away goals against Monaco. It's Juve versus Sevilla in the other semi-final. So big, big stuff here. Sevilla and Barca finishing 4-4. So Sevilla must have won on away goals as well. As we go into the semi-final, taking on Bayern, uh, Bayern Munich. They did make the semi-finals in real life this year, but can the missing World Cup squad not go into Russia do it in the semi-finals? Rabio making a, more of an appearance this season. Gets a goal in the third minute, putting us 1-0 up, getting that crucial away goal um, in this one. Our front three not doing much in this champ in these Champions League knockouts as Bellerin scored the winner last game. Tolisso comes on for Keita Balde as Lacazette comes on for Sane as well. A lot of substitutions going on, but Martins... The Portuguese right winger gets the equaliser for Bayern Munich. And it's 1-1, but we have that crucial away goal advantage. Going into the home leg at Craven Cottage. Can we pull it off in front of the home fans? Can we book our place in the Champions League final and complete the challenge? We're going to have to look. We're going to have to wait and see as Akadi starts up top for the first time in a while. 
Um, we have Laporte and Martinez at the back. Bellerin at right back. Let's see how we go in this one. The first 30 minutes goes by. Rodriguez gets a yellow, but Alexandro gets on the score sheet here at left back. Rodriguez misses a penalty right before half time. That could have been a crucial away goal for Bayern Munich, but it's Lewandowski in the 65th getting a away goal there for Bayern. Is he going to force it into extra time? He does as we head in. Is it going to go to penalties? Are we going to get a late minute winner? What's going to happen? Martial gets a 105th minute goal to put us 2 1 up. Can we hold on? We do to book our plays in the Champions League final up against either Juventus or Real or Juventus or Sevilla sorry so we're gonna have a look to see who we'll be versing in the Champions League final the reject missing World Cup team will be versing Sevilla in the Champions League final this is how we did in the FA Cup we went out on penalties to Stoke and they ended up versing Newcastle after they beat Man City 2-1 at Wembley. So we could have easily won the FA Cup as well. But we end up coming fourth in the Premier League just in case we need to do a third season. We will be in the Champions League next season in case we don't win against Sevilla. But it's the big one, the Champions League final. Before we get into that, just showing you the table here as we finish fourth. Um, two less than last season, but we had the Champions League to deal with, so more games and our players probably got more fatigued. It's QPR West Brom and Aston Villa going down there, the two Midlands clubs as well as QPR in there, and we look to see the Champions League final is awaiting us. That is our road to the final. We won against Inter, we won against Real Madrid, three peak champions, won three times in a row. And it's Bayern Munich. We defeated 3-2. As well as Sevilla beating, Bayer, uh, beating Barcelona. Sorry, Bayer Leverkusen and Juventus 3-1 on aggregate. So we have a tough job to do in the final. But this is our squad report for our second season. For our Champions League debut is Leo Sane with 57 appearances. He got two less goals than last season. But his assists are up to 11. So 23 goals and 11 assists. We move on to Alexandro having an absolutely banger of a season at left back. 53 appearances 16 goals and three assists proving why the likes of Manchester United are after his signature this summer the Brazilian is on fire in our career mode save Ruben Neves getting there to an 80 rated 49 appearances five goals and three assists a perfect season for the Portuguese man heading to the Premier League in real life 47 appearances for Fabinho the man recently transferred to Liverpool getting four goals and seven assists whilst Lacazette getting double digits in goals getting 10 goals and seven assists 46 appearances as we move down Leno was our main keeper with 42 appearances there we move down into the players that had a lot of appearances but you know didn't have that many goals or assists to show for it um, we move further down the list Morata 17 appearances one goal there you know the players that didn't really have much of a cameo this season but still did contribute a fair bit um, as we have Goethe and Payet not getting any appearances in this team very unfortunate for them but um, it's the man who scored the winning World Cup goal in 2014, not getting any game time in the missing World Cup squad of 2018, and Dimitri Payet not getting any game time there either. But that is the team moving into the Champions League final against Sevilla. It's uh, Sane, Martial, Icardi up top. Uh, we have Rabiot, Nine Golan, Fabinho in the midfield, and it's Alexandro Martinez, Laporte, and Bellerin at the back. And of course, it's Bern Leno in goal, but it's the big one. The Champions League final as Martial gets us off to the perfect start. They're getting us 1 0 up. 22 minutes in, we are half time here in the Champions League final. Can we hold on against a decent Sevilla side? It's Maro Icardi getting us a double there in the 56s. Rabio gets us a goal in the 68th minute. Vasquez gets a little, um, let's say, consolation there, but it's 3 1 to the missing World Cup squad of 2018. Vasquez tries to get a little consolation, but we are too strong for Sevilla, and we do end up winning 3-1. The missing champions, uh, the missing World Cup squad, winning the Champions League title. As you can see there, it's Bern Leno posing with the trophy, and the experiment is complete. The missing World Cup squad 
of 2018 can indeed win the Champions League as we do have the team of the competition announced and it's that man Alexandro at the front. We do have uh, Sane in there, we have Alexandro as well, only two, full, uh, only two of our players in there but I hope you guys did enjoy this FIFA 18 career mode video. If you did hit that like button, hit the subscribe button for more FIFA 18 career mode, FIFA 19 stuff, some World Cup content also coming in the future if you want that type of stuff you do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell follow me on twitter the link is in the description and i'll catch you guys on the very next video